this video is going to be basic fault finding using an insulation resistance tester. I'm planning on making a series depending on how this goes, but we'll start off with a basic power circuit and why an MCB wall trip. If you're like me and when you went to college and was taught fault finding, I felt like I was taught how to answer the questions and not actually how to fault find. I just memorised the answers. So when you actually qualify, come out your time and go on site and there's a fault, you're like, um, by the way, I'm sitting on the floor with a bed sheet and a Kallax box as a table. My demo, I'll be using this client insulation resistance tester. It's bigger than I thought it'd be. What shoe is that? Comes with this kit case with two sets of leads. It's got um, crocodile clips and probes. I'll just be using the clips for my demo today. Can I just add? I have seen people putting flex in a whisker box, and they literally just like slit this hole. When you should put a stuffing gland through it, and as you tighten it up, it will. So you see the hole is still there. As you tighten it up, it should pop the hole out. Did you see it's popped in it just from doing it up? So you actually don't need to cut out the this bit. Just prepping the cable so we can test from it. So I was thinking we'll do it like it's a scenario to make things a bit more simpler. Picture this. There's an MCB feeding a cable and it feeds a whisker box. That's, that's what we're doing. But oh no, the MCB has tripped. Why has it tripped? I'm not going to go into the college technical terms of why it's tripped, but long story short, it's either pulling too much current. So say if it's a 6 amp and it's pulling 10 amp, it's going to trip. Or there is a short circuit somewhere, which means like a live cable is touching an earth cable and obviously they're not meant to touch. So touch, bang. This is literally what I'm explaining today, but just physically. Side note, have you ever tried stripping high flex? It is actually awful to strip. Ugh. I promise I know what I'm doing. Ish. Oh, I've done it. This cable is so fat, it literally just about fits in that stuffing gland. But another little side note like this. You see, you want a bit of the outer sheath popping through. And this is with armors as well, because if it's on the cores, you could just risk damaging the cores on the edge. So that's why you always want to bring a tiny bit through. You want to get yourself a set of these to do up glands, normally for armoured glands, because otherwise you get people moaning at you saying, you're scratching the glands. And this is only on Instagram. I've never heard that before. I have another side note. So always glands in the bottom, because if you're doing it outside and you gland in the top, you risk water getting in. And I've seen it before, a stuffing gland mounted this way, outside, and they haven't even tightened it up. It was loose, gaping. I opened the lid and water was gushing out, and that would be why the lights were tripping. But if you just did it properly, then there wouldn't have been a problem. What's your favorite way to strip cable? Do you like croppers? Do you like side cutters? Do you like strippers? Do you like the ergo stripper? What's your weapon? Look at this. It's got sand. Also, it's got a light. If I can turn it on. It's going to be backwards for you, but I'm sorry. There's a regulation for this. I can see the table, but I haven't got a regs book to hand. But if you're testing a power circuit, you want to set the tester on insulation resistance to 500 volt. But don't do this test if there's vulnerable equipment. So if you're testing lights, you don't like certain lights, I think they're quite sensitive to the test. So disconnect them. Or if you're doing a motor, if it's on a contactor, fine. But if it's on an inverter, do not do an insulation resistance test and throw 500 volts up it because you will probably blow it up and they're really expensive. So if you're getting confused, with what the results mean, what the leads mean. 
so you know the cables aren't meant to touch so mimic it first yourself put these together so this is indicating the cables touching somewhere which it shouldn't do and click test hold it down see how the result is zero 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 that is because the cable is so a low it's like a low result with your resistance there is no resistance there because it's touching does that make sense and now picture the cable running straight it's not making contact anywhere and that is your two leads if you click test see how the result is 4000 mega ohms you can do this test on any insulation resistance tester um, I think my mega does it up to greater than 999 mega ohms but now we know big number is good bad number bad I think the regs are the minimum the result you should accept is one mega ohm but it should not be that low at all it should be over the hundred so we're going to test this cable this circuit to see if it's okay to see if there's damage or see if there's water damage so I've put the testers between live and earth and then if we click test it's good and then I would repeat that test with live and neutral and earth and neutral and then it should all check out fine let's do this test again but this time I've made a fault in the cable I've stuck a way go between the live and earth so this could mean there's that, that result we're going to get is there's damage in the cable somewhere or this box is full of water because Dave down the pub didn't do up the stuffing gland and water has just been filling it up over time the result is zero 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 so that means somewhere in the circuit which you don't know the cables are touching and that is here Am I making sense? Are you with me? Are you following? Shall we fill this up with water to actually give it a real demo? This is the part where I get water everywhere. So, let's test it at the minute. I've taken the Wagos off, so the cables are just sitting there as they would in a box. 4,000 megrams, not touching. Have I stressed that enough? Are you with me when I say that? So, shall we? Put a bit of water in it. See if that's made a difference. Oh, yeah, straight away. 0 0.017 mega ohms. And that would probably be enough for the MCB to trip. Because like I said, it has to be over one. But ideally, over a few hundred. So, some of you might think this is really, really simple. But... I know it took me personally a while to wrap my head around testing because I knew how to do it, the steps with everything, but I just didn't understand what my result was. And then that would then affect your fault finding because you would test a cable and get a number, but I'm like, is that good or bad? I don't know. So let me know if it's helped anyone or was this too simple, this video? Shall I try and make it a bit more complicated? Just think of the potential though, like it is really cringe talking to a camera. I'm actually dying inside but I could do motors how to test it to see if that's down or if it's the cable um testing elements and I also plan on doing a how-to with whisker boxes because the amount of disrespect I see that people do to them and they're amazing do you remember when we used to use them metal trouser boxes and like tea boxes for like putting a light up you put your armoured into that and then you'd come out with the flex for the light they was long and now we've got this beautiful box and it just it pains me to see what some people do them do to them so if i'm wasting my time let me know if you liked it let me know if you've got requests let me know peace why i like this tester as well i don't know if you've ever gone to do fault finding i've been on a breakdown carry a tool bag for me i'd go out the van take it 10 minute walk away up the plant like 10 flights of stairs go there i'm doing my little tests and i'm thinking hmm i wonder if the cable's damaged or if it's the motor so i need to do an, an ir like an insulation resistance test and i'm like oh my god the test is in the van so you know all the way about the other but imagine just being like whipping this out your tool bag like let me just do that test now 
just a little note about the tester it seems really good so far i'm liking it it does your insulation resistance voltage ac dc continuity and like where it beeps because we like it to beep don't we um all good the only thing is there's two sets of leads so maybe it'd be easier to have one set of leads with interchangeable tips and it doesn't fit in the bag but it is nice to have a bag for the leads anyway keep them safe especially in the industry i work in don't i look much better in black than orange i think i need to change my job this is giving me life um wearing this brand i actually don't know how to pronounce it i don't want to mug myself off so i'll tag that if you're a girl the trousers are comfy the only thing i'll say is size up if you've got fat thighs um other than that it's great cute little flappy pockets 